Nathan Cox, thanks for joining us around the home. Today I'm going to show you guys how to use your string trimmer. Okay, some people call these weed eaters, uh, but they're really a string trimmer. Weed eater is like calling a cotton swab a Q-tip. All right, but this is going to be a very basic video. These are for people who have like maybe like never ever used one or have only used it once or twice and still don't have a clue of what they're doing. Okay, but before we even get into using it, we got to make sure we're wearing the right stuff. Now, for those of you who know me, you know, I don't always think safety first. I think do it right and then safety will follow, okay? Uh, there are certain protective wear that you should have when you do things. Whether well, a weed eater or string trimmer, safety glasses, definitely number one piece of protective equipment, okay? I don't care that thing has a guard on it. It's gonna pick up a little piece of gravel, a rock, a piece of weed, something like that, and it's gonna get stuck in your eye, trust me. Okay, if I see one of my neighbors, like especially their kids trying to like do it, I'm like, hey, hey, put some glasses on, okay? I'm very serious about that because you will get stuff thrown in your eyes. So, safety glasses, number one. If it's an electric weed eater, then you really don't need earplugs, you don't. But if it's a gas one, a little two strokes, you really should have some earplugs to protect your hearing um, because they're just loud and annoying. Now, the next thing is where I see a lot of people skimp on and I really don't think they should. That's pants. Just put some pants on. I know it's hot, you might want to go out there in shorts and stuff like that, but I mean, unless you just like getting your shins just beat all the hell, put some pants on, okay? The stuff goes everywhere. And put some old pants on, because it's gonna be splattered with grass and stuff like that. And it's gonna get grass stains. And actual shoes that are closed toed, real shoes. Old tennis shoes are okay, boots are even better. Now let's get back to your string trimmer, okay? Now, I am obviously demoing an electric unit. This is a cordless, Battery powered, specifically this is the Ego 56 volt string trimmer. This one here has what they call a rapid reload head. Um, I show, I have a video, it'll pop at the top right of your screen, specifically how to load this one. And then shortly after that pop up, it'll be the other Ego head, which is their uh, power load head, which means you, you load it with just a button. Uh, uh, but that video will show you how to load that one. All right, very fun. Um, now these, forget about the rapid reload and the power load head. These in general are called bump head, okay? The reason they're called bump heads is because to wind the string out, you, you smack it on the ground while it's running. You gotta you got make it while it's spinning, okay? You bump the head on the ground, and when you do so, the centrifugal force, centrifugal, okay, I gotta pronounce that right, is going to actually force feed a little bit of string out, and it gets a little longer. So when it starts getting short, you tap it on the ground, a little bit sticks out, about an inch or so. Maybe inch, between an inch and two inches, will stick out, okay? And then you think, okay, where do you tap it on the ground? I prefer doing it on smooth surfaces. If you hit it on really rough concrete um, and asphalt that works like sandpaper, you're really gonna chew up your bump head and it's gonna just really kind of destroy the bottom here. Um, so I try to find smooth rocks, um, sometimes even manhole covers, uh, the side of a wood fence, get a tap on there, you know, that's pretty smooth. I, I, you know, even in the grass, I just like smack it in the grass. It really doesn't make like a circle hole in the grass. I mean, if your grass is like, I guess like super, super, super great, you know, I mean, yeah, okay, maybe like don't do it in the grass. And you might be like wondering, well, how long do I make the string? Well, that's about right, right there. Okay, so your guard, okay, this is, this is simpler than I'm making it here. The guard right here has a little cutter. So when you, when you pop it out, when you, when you do the pop sound, you, you should hear it kind of cut. It'll, it'll whack it a few times and then, then it's done. And then these will cut off a little excess. And that's the length. This length is predetermined for this string trimmer. Meaning it knows how much power it's got. It knows what string size string you're probably putting in here. And so they figured this was the proper length that will maximize the speed and power for this unit, okay? Very technical. At least it sounds very technical. I may or may not be making some of that up. Okay. And I'll, when we actually turn it on, I will uh, uh, show you guys how to kind of like listen. So you can kind of tell how short or long it is just by listening to it. Now, some of you might be like, I have an auto feed, you know, string trimmer, like Black & Decker or something like that. So what that is, is it's basically just constantly kind of like feeding out a little bit of string, which is kind of nice because you don't have to worry about it, but then not because you're wasting a lot of string, you know, because it's always feeding it out, and you have to have like low cartridges rather than being able to buy a big, you know, round of str string. So it's more expensive. Okay, now how do we start it? This one here has a safety. 
This one here is the safety is on top. You squeeze that down and then you can pull the trigger. So if I don't do it, you can't pull the trigger. So most of these will have safety. Maybe it's on the side, a push button. And most of these should have a variable speed throttle. Um, so that means the further you pull it, the faster it goes. And it is important to know, it's not just all on or all off, okay? But let's go ahead and put our glasses on and slap a battery in and I'll show you how, how it works. Now I've got my battery in and I'm ready to go. And I know that the string is a hair too long, so I'm gonna go ahead and spin it up and cut off a little excess right away. There you go. And that nice kind of deep sound right there is what you're listening for, for the, the long string. When it's really whiny and kind of ee, hummy, like annoying sound, that, that means that the string is generally really short and the thing is actually trying to spin too fast. All right, now the most basic task is how do you edge along your sidewalk, driveway, etc. And some people are like, I want an edger and I want it to be like perfectly 90 degrees. Okay, well you can hold your, your string trimmer and you can hold it like this and, and make it like 90 degrees, okay? That's very possible to do. Um, I always generally like more of a 45. Kind of angle it in like this. And uh, when you do so, pay attention to which way it's spinning. You see how it's spinning clockwise? Maybe you can see it, maybe you can't. So that means that the string on the bottom is gonna be throwing the weeds away from me, okay? If I was doing it like this, then it's gonna be throwing the weeds right at me. I prefer to throw the weeds away from me. I don't like to be pelted like constantly. All right. Okay, see, that's a very simple thing. It makes a nice clean line. Um, now some string trimmers will have a handle that you can easily rotate here um, and make it easier to hold if you want that perfect 90 degrees. And if you're maybe you're like, maybe you're trying to do it and you're like, hey, how's it so easy for you? Mine's like super hard. Well, when it's overgrown and actually growing on top of the concrete that hasn't been edged for probably months or, or you know, the whole season, then trying to make that first edging cut is gonna be terrible and it's gonna be sloppy. And it's gonna take a couple of weeks of you hitting that to get it like trained back to where you want it. So if, if your grass is growing over the cement, don't be upset if you can't get it right the first time or even the second time. All right, now I told you about that noise it's gonna make when the string's too low. So how about I wear it off on the concrete and make that noise. <laughs> All right, can you hear that? That much louder whiny hum? That's because these strings are so short. The longer strings really kind of just have a, a deeper bass of thump in, in the wind. That's probably a bad way to describe it. All right, so how we fix that is I'm gonna show you guys how you, how you bump it, okay, when you're actually using it here. And here's kind of a bald spot in the grass anyway. So like I said, you guys make sure it's spinning because you need the centrifugal forces and you're just gonna tap it on the ground. And we need to do it again. There we go. And sometimes you can hear it cut, and sometimes you can't. You know, sometimes it just cuts just a hair. But there we go, we got full length string again. Okay, now cutting around houses is generally pretty easy. You don't want to whack vinyl siding because this will cut the vinyl siding. But if it's a concrete slab or a brick or something like that, then no worries. You can cut right up against it. Now, but going around plants, that's where it gets tricky because you don't want to damage the plant. I don't want to cut the bark up on the tree and let insects get into it. And especially if I had smaller like flowers and stuff like that. So you need to learn where the string runs. So this is where sometimes you even slow it down a little bit and you watch the weeds cut as you get into it.
Now, of course, that takes a steady hand to learn to do. So don't be mad at yourself if you can't do it right away and you slice into a plant. It's going to happen, okay? It takes practice, but you will learn where that string is and you will learn to be able to cut right around your plants without actually cutting your plants. And then even after many years of me doing it, I still accidentally, you know, dig in because I'm trying to get too close. It happens. Give yourself a little bit of credit and you realize, you know, it happens. All right, so I hope I covered just about everything that you beginners would want to know about using your string trimmer. Um, I really try to think back, but it's hard because, you know, I've used ones for so many years, it just comes second nature to me. And now it comes to the time of wrapping up the video. So if you wouldn't mind subscribing to our channel, checking out our website with hundreds of more videos organized really, really well. And there's another video for you to check out as well. You guys have a great one.